Welcome back to Ember and Cole's English Springer Spaniel family. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel about my English Springer Spaniels, Ember and Cole, and all the fun they have together. We also do grooming and some dog training trips, tips. So today we're going to talk about bringing a puppy home and what you're gonna need when you have this puppy, and then bringing a puppy home into an older dog's home. Cole is nine and a half now, but he was nine when Ember was brought home in September at almost three months old. So these are the, some of the things we have. Some of the things we have just for regular puppy, so you're gonna need a dog bed. It doesn't have to be this big. This is Cole's dog bed, adult 50 pound dog bed, but Ember loves it still and she's just eating her toy right here on it. The other thing we believe in this house is we use dog crates. So this crate here was about a medium sized wire crate. And inside the crate, I have a dog bed. Some people at first would use a towel because puppies are notorious for chewing and tearing things. Luckily, Ember isn't a huge terror. She doesn't rip her toys and she doesn't rip any towels, but she does prefer children's toys. Children's toys are her thing. So the crate I use mostly for when we leave the house, we put her in here and Cole runs around loose. He doesn't have to be in a crate anymore. Um, when, you know, it's time for the puppy to have a nap and, and you want to have her secure so you don't want her running all around your house. And at meal time, I feed all my dogs in the crates just to keep them separated so we don't have anybody jealous over somebody else's food or any children in any dog's food or anything like that. So it's a great lifesaver for that. So some of the things down here that are great lifesavers for our dogs, our dogs are soft mouths. English Springer Spaniels are soft mouthed dogs. So they like a lot of plush toys. This one here has a ducky sound that it makes. They like little birds. They like this one is a really good one for tug and it has a hundred million. It was from Christmas, but it has a hundred million squeakers all over it. She loves that. We also have some of these. Ember really likes plastic. So this kind of plasticky rubber squeaky snowman is one of her favorites. There's also great things. Balls are great things to have for your puppy. Any sort of just thing you can get at a store. This is someone who made for me and it's kind of made out of like a felty fleece stuff and it's just a braid. And she loves this for, for tug. Amber right now, if you can see what she's doing, she's pushing this ball around here. This is another great lifesaver I found when Amber was driving me crazy and eating all my kids' toys and all that sort of thing. This ball here has holes in it to be filled with kibble. It's like a trick ball, kind of a puzzle. It has four little of these plasticky things around. I had to cut them bigger because she could never get the, the treats out. Right now it has some pieces of liver and it had some kibble in it. She got the kibble out. This side, see, only has one little bit left. We have a couple other things like that. We have this neat Kong ball where the top comes off and you can put cookies inside and then she has to roll it to get them out of this hole here. You can see she's tried and bitten and spun it a bunch of times. It's all over. <laughs> That's another one. And then the good old handy Kong. This is a baby small Kong. I don't have a big one for her, but she loves this. I usually give this to her when I'm going out somewhere. I'll fill it with peanut butter and some of her kibble. And then she can lick at that and not really notice that we're gone. This is very similar. You can put a big pieces of cookies in here. I used to have some stick things that I used to give them and you could put that in it. Oh, she's coming to check it out. Yeah, it's not full, sorry, baby. So some other things I used when she was really little, she doesn't really play with them right now, are these sort of kind of chew toys. This one here is a Nyla bone, and she used it for a little bit. You can see there's a few little baby teeth holes in it. It was great for the baby teeth, especially since she loves rubber and plastic so much. And then it came with this one as well, and you can see she has chewed this one. So when her teeth were really sore, these bumpy, it's kind of like a child. You could put this in the freezer and cool it, and then give it to her. Same thing as this one here. This was Cole's. Cole used it. Ember's used it. It's a great toy. They both like it. Other people will put like a carrot in the freezer and freeze a carrot and then give them a carrot. We never really got around to that, but she had those toys or I gave her a bone. She's a big bone girl and loves, loves bones. So that's another necessity I would say to have is some either pizzles or a pig's ear or a hoof or something like that. I don't like the bones where they all kind of fall apart and there's little shards everywhere. That's really dangerous for puppies. So it is better than a real animal byproduct. Our other necessity that we have is a baby gates. I have two baby gates on my main floor. I have one over here on my stairs so that she can't go upstairs and eat my kids' toys in the room or poop and peep when she was little and things like that. I made sure that we baby gated our stairs off and then we baby gate our front hall off, which I'll show you after. 
So another thing that is always a good thing, which most people do have in their home, is a towel. So we have a bunch of old, very old dog towels. And I put this at my back door and I'll use it when the dogs come in with muddy feet, um, things like that. Those are great things to practice with a puppy wiping their feet at the door. I'll also take it and I'll drape it over her crate. Just a second and I'll show you that. So I've draped the towel of the crate. It kind of gives a little bit of privacy. The sun, this is a very bright room. And when I put it back in its little house, this crate here, then it has a little roof on it and the sun doesn't get in. Um, it's also, I find these are wire crates for my dogs. It get, makes them not feel like they're in a crate as much. The big plastic very kennels are very dark and I don't know, mine just seem to like these better, but a little towel on the top is great. I also like store things on top, so the towel prevents them from falling through and the puppy eating them. So here's how we have it so that Ember can't go down my front hall. Put our baby gate right here. I balance it between my banister and Cole's crate. I'll usually put a baby, gate, a baby chair, excuse me, a kid's chair on the other side here. One of my son's little chairs from this table over here. I'll put that there for him. And then um, we can baby gate it. Sometimes we baby gate Cole out into the hall here. And we'll leave Ember running around in this portion of the house, my living room and kitchen, just so that he gets a break. He doesn't have to worry about her. She doesn't have to bounce in his face. And also for me, so that I don't have to have two dogs that I'm watching at all times and making sure that they're not getting into some sort of trouble. Something I forgot to show you, very important when you're getting a puppy, is you need to buy a little collar, something that can extend. This is Ember's little baby collar. And she wore it actually till she was probably almost seven months old. We extended it as far as it could go and it did last her. Another great thing is your leash. I always go for a six, at least a six foot, foot leash here. This is the one I had for Cole and Ember just used it. And then we purchased her a nice little a little training collar here with a little bit of choke, but it's not a full choke. It's called a martingale collar. And then she has her nice new six foot, foot leash with her paint, with her little dog bone poop bag. But anyways, I was going to say, we don't use extension leashes in this house, especially with children. They're very dangerous. They can burn your legs. They can pull out of your hands really easily. I had one pull out of my hand with a puppy and it hit the puppy in the bum. And then the puppy went screeching down the street with an extension leash following after it. And so we don't use them here. The um, only time we do occasionally use them is when we're in the country and we're going on a big walk. We will take them and let the dogs then maybe go swimming at the end of a leash if I can't let them off, loo off loose without a leash, um, those sort of scenarios. But to be very careful, especially with children around there, their death traps are waiting to hurt somebody. So now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna baby gate my kitchen up. This is what we do in the evening uh, when we're preparing dinner and Amber's had a big play and a walk and she just needs some chill out time. And when she was little, so I could watch that she wasn't peeing on my floor and I could keep track of her, I baby gate this side of my kitchen here and the other side over there. And then she has a whole kitchen with me usually baking dinner in it and we have a lovely time together. So I'll set that up and I'll show you that little setup. Okay, so I put Ember's crate back where it goes. This is this little slot that goes right beside my stairs. Perfect spot. And then Cole's crate goes back over there. He has the next size up. I think this is a large or an extra large, probably large uh, wire crate. So when I'm beginning my kitchen, I just pull his crate out. It gives me a little bit of an extension of a baby gate here. I need a big, huge baby gate across this area. But see, I can baby gate it across. And I just hold it in with her treat, with her little toy box. Sometimes I used to put a chair on the other side in case she was struggling to get out. And then on the other side, let's walk around here. This baby gate actually just fits. I can secure it between the wall and between the cupboards. It has to be off the floor a bit or it won't work, but it's a perfect little spot. She can't leave. She's stuck in here. I've given her one of our nice little blankets from our couch as a little bed. The last thing we do is I didn't want to buy two crates and have one downstairs and one upstairs. And with Mr. Big Boy here, my king size bed isn't going to fit two dogs that well all night. So Amber spends part of the night in my master bathroom. And we baby gate her in there and she has dog beds and things like that. And I'll show you that set up in a few seconds. Um, and then she usually comes in in the morning, you know, five or six and gets on her bed and sleeps with us then. But she kind of keeps a peace of mind that she hasn't gone off the bed and gone to chew things or eaten some sock or something like that and, or had an accident on the floor and we didn't know. Um, so she had a nice little tiled in area where she could be secure as well. So these are all good things to have for any sort of puppy. It's great to have with your older dog so that you're giving him or her their space as well because they haven't lived with a dog. He's been over two years now since his mother died 
and uh, he was her baby, so it was a kind of a different situation where he's the big boy now, the daddy dog, or the big protector, and um, so he needs some time just to be his old self, but he does love her a lot. Just before I show you my bathroom setup, I just forgot something here. I found it as I was tidying up. This is for any type of spaniel who has long ears. This is called a snoot. They wear this at their dinner time. Ember now thinks it's dinner time. And they put it over their head and they it keeps their ears away from their food. So they don't get any mucky food in it. They don't then eat their ears or anything like that. Hold on, put on Ember and I'll just show you. Here's Ember with her snoot on, keeping her ears back. And when she eats, she then doesn't get any food in them and we have no chance of her eating her ears or having dirty, sticky, smelly, foul ears. Here we are, Cole's got his snood on. Cole has his name written on his. His aunt made him his snood. She knitted it and made it. You can also get the cloth ones, people will make them. I'm not very handy at making things. So I have other people, this was someone's hand-me-down they gave me. Cole's one's worn his since he was a baby, and so is Ember. And they just know it's dinner time when I put them on. So just talking about dinner and my dog's snoods, I just wanted to make a quick mention, something you need for your puppy, of obviously dog bowls. Uh, for dinner and a water bowl. We use a nice ceramic water bowl here for their water that we keep filled. The two dogs do share it. Cole doesn't like when it gets dirty like that, so I'll probably have to clean it after this, but he's gonna finish it off because it's his dirt right now. And Ember makes it dirty, he won't drink it. Ember uses a smaller bowl. She's eight months now, so I'll probably transition her over soon, but she liked that for her little mouth. And Cole gets this nice stainless steel big one. Stainless steel are easy to keep clean. You can see the dirt in them. They don't grow anything. They can bang them around, beat them up, and they'll get a couple of dings, but they're not going to break or ch chip or shatter or anything like that. So they're great for the dogs to use for their dinner. Okay, I think I've covered everything down here. I'll just show you the last thing, and then that will be it for today. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys in a sec. So this is Ember in her bathroom. You can see I have the baby gate on the door. So I'll just zoom out, trying to show cute Ember. Here's the bathroom door. And there's our baby gate. It's just a small, it's actually smaller than the ones downstairs. I don't know, I didn't read the measurements properly when I ordered off of Amazon. But it serves the purpose. She doesn't jump it. She doesn't personally like the gate. They hate the noise when they fall. So if they fall a few times, then they uh, don't try to jump out of them. My husband and I have to hop over this gate all the time, but that's okay. Keeps her in here. She's got two dog beds. She's got this lovely plush bed off of Amazon. That's one of those calming. Um, beds. I thought I ordered a large, but I think it's more like a medium, but she sleeps in that every night. She gets inside, curls up, and I put a nice little baby blanket on that she brought from her breeder. And then they have this other old dog bed that used to have a big circular ring around it. That part ripped and destroyed. And I just put it down as an extra mat, which you can see she uses both. I think it's time we order a new bed though, don't you think, babe? And then she has her toys. And she has this whole bathroom. When she was, when she was little, she could if she had an accident, she'd usually have it on the tile, not the little carpet here. Sometimes I had a little towel for my shower and she would pee on that, but you know, that's okay. We had to, until probably about a month ago, keep all the toilet paper rolls off of the dispenser here and put the toilet paper either on the counter or the side of the bathtub. And our garbage is always up. Even the toilet bowl cleaner has somehow escaped to the floor, but it had usually been up. So those are all things puppy love. puppies love, especially the garbage and especially the toilet paper roll. She got into a toilet paper roll earlier this week. However, it was when a child had thrown downstairs for the downstairs bathroom and she ate that, tore it up into pieces before it made it to the bathroom it needed to be in. But Ember's very happy in here. We can hear her when she gets up. She squeaks at the door or barks or scratches. We can come and get her. And sometimes she just needs resettling in the night. When she was little, she did need to go out probably maybe for a few weeks, maybe until she was four months old. Um, and then usually she comes in and gets in on our bed with us and gets cuddly between someone's legs or up by their, their neck or around them or one of the get goes in with one of the kids. But this, she's happy in here and it's a safe spot. It's not as cramped as a crate. Um, when she was little, we'd bring her up here to bed with us and she'd go to sleep while we were brushing her teeth and using the bathroom and then she didn't even notice us leaving. So there was no crying beside the bed or squeaking or anything like that. I mean, she did wake up probably like at two and then maybe again at five, but those are just kind of the breaks with a new puppy. I hope that I've covered all the things that I can think of right now. And hopefully some of them will be great tips for any of you out there getting a new puppy. Puppies are wonderful, but they are a lot of hard work. You gotta remember they chew even her. She's still chewing and she may chew for another six months to a year. I, I don't know how long. <laughs> We'll have to see that all dogs are different, but puppies, they chew baseboards, they chew 
tables, they chew chairs, they destroy their toys, they love shoes, they love toilet paper, paper towel, towels from the sink, anything. Um, there, are, there are a lot of work, but there's definitely the joys to know the sweet puppy kisses and the love and companion that you get. We wouldn't trade Ember for the world, but we want everyone to know that, you know, before you get a puppy, you got to think about it because they are a lifelong commitment. They aren't disposable. They are there for your life. They're not to give away or put in a shelter or anywhere like that. Um, going to a reputable breeder is a really good way to make sure you get a dog that suits you and your family. And that's my rant. <laughs> Thank you for watching Ember and Cole's English Swinger Spaniel family. Come back for some more fun with the pups and hopefully maybe some more things on some puppy training and teeth brushing and all those sort of dog related tips. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye. Please subscribe.